But I absolutely love Thomas Sowell. Is you know, this is someone that literally four generations of my family have have been reading Thomas Sowell. You know, my great wow. my um, yeah, my my great grandmother, um, my my grandmother and her brothers, my parents, and and now me. Um, you know, so and this this guy is brilliant. You know, he's in his nineties. He's been writing for decades and decades and decades, and he's still writing. Like he said, he published a book, I think, on his ninety first birthday on uh, charter schools and their enemies. That's what it was called. And, you know, the man is absolutely brilliant. I honestly think that he is the most brilliant and well-developed thinker that America has ever produced. He, uh, he's just second to none. I don't think there's someone, you know, there are a lot of people that are, are absolutely stunningly brilliant, like his good friend and mentor, Milton Friedman. But I, I just, I just think that Thomas Sowell just takes the cake. Um, he writes a book about, uh, intellectuals and you know people like Noam Chomsky, yeah. and, he, and he talks about these things, and he talks about their ideas, and he and he just you know uh, dissects them and talks about them. No one digs deeper to the bedrock of an issue than than Thomas Sowell. Like no one digs. He just really just gets in there and saying like, okay, what is actually going on here? And he doesn't have vested interests. He just he just wants to understand what's happening, and so he just digs in there to find out. And I think that that idea of of pure empiricism is what I like the most about him, and what I've gotten the most from him is that you know he just he just takes everything empirically and it's like okay hey, you know let's look at this analytically and see what is the evidence for it. He was actually a Marxist growing up. He grew up very very poor. He's a black man. He was born in 1930 in the Deep South during the Great Depression, during Jim Crow. This guy had a very hard life. And then he grew up in a slum and he was in the slums of Harlem during World War II and beyond. He dropped out of school when he was you know, test tested in his divestment high school, which is a, you know, a, a gifted program to honor his high school in New York. And he tested into there and then he had to drop out when he was like 16 because he was having family issues and he needed to go and he needed to work and support himself. And having dropped, and then he got drafted into Korea and was in the military for a few years. And then he started going to college and, and, you know, having not even graduated high school, this guy had learned enough and worked hard enough that he ended up getting an academic scholarship to Harvard and graduated with honors and actually wrote his, his master or his, his honors thesis at Harvard on Marxist capitalism or Marxist uh, uh, economics. And, you know, the reason being is that he said that, you know, Marx was talking about the differences in, in wealth and disparities. No one else was really addressing that. And so it was the only, it was only dog in the fight. And so he's reading that going like, why am I so poor and my family so poor and my life so hard when I'm seeing, you know, Saks Fifth Avenue and all these, you know, big, you know, gleaming buildings and all these people living this much better life than me. Marx addressed that. No one else was really addressing that. And so he was a Marxist. He was a Marxist taking Milton Friedman's uh, class at Chicago, getting his PhD. You know, he got his, he, his uh, advisors in uh, getting his PhD in economics were George Stigler, Milton Friedman, and Friedrich Hayek, three Nobel Prize winners in economics. And it was the three main uh, economists that brought back a free market thought to the, to the Western world before, you know, otherwise they were socialists or Keynesians or, or, or whatever. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, Thomas Sowell himself was, was a Marxist and he took this, these classes from these people who were now fully in, in, in you know, of the mind, uh, mindset that free market uh, economics was, was the better way to go. And that, you know, that didn't even sway him until he actually worked in the government for the labor department and saw exactly how the government works. And he said, okay, no, this is not the way <laughs> government is not the answer. And so he just started looking at this and he says that, you know, that he was an empiricist before he was a Marxist. And so that's what it was. And so we actually started seeing evidence that like, you know, these bureaucracies have their own uh, incentives and own, own values and their own drives that are not in keeping with actually making society run better. They, they're they looking after themselves. They're looking after their own budgets and they're looking after their own agendas. So, you know, he, he found that this was actually not a good thing. Um, his books are so insightful and they're so straightforward they're so clear and you and his, his papers his, his columns as well like he's he's just written for so many decades and he's just a brilliant writer that 
he can boil down extremely complex issues into a 750 word essay where you're just looking at it and you're like, yeah, that's, that's bulletproof. That's airtight. He's like, you know, here's what they're saying. Here's what these guys are saying. Here's the history. Here's the background. Here's this evidence. And you just go, yep. Okay. And he doesn't tell you, this is what you should think. He just shows you, here's the evidence. Here's what's going on. Here's what's actually going on. And you just go like, yeah, okay, that, that's obvious. <laughs> that's, that's definitely what's happening. And so, and, and his books are even, even better. And so, you know, some of his books, like there's, um, you know, economic uh, facts and fallacies is just a great, great place to start. You know, because it just shows just how many things that we take for granted, you know, like we do, like, you know, we do in medicine, like, oh, this is just what we've been told. So that's just what it is, are just absolute crap. And, and he just, and he shows the hard evidence of that. And so, you know, that's a great, great place to look at. And this is, you know, it's, it's really reading Thomas Sowell that, that has really sort of allowed my brain to work in the way that I can sort of look at me like, okay, that so, sounds like bullshit. Is this bullshit? And like looking in there and, and knowing how to, to ask questions and knowing how to find answers just by reading his, his work and, you know, things like, you know, wealth, poverty, and politics and, and so many others, I mean, they're just such brilliant works and, uh, you know, just basic economics is, is, a, is probably his most successful book. And it just really, it just really boils down just, just economics. And it's, uh, it's actually an interesting read, uh, but it's actually a textbook and his other books are not textbooks, but this textbook is actually one of his best selling books. And because it really just does boil down, this is how economics works. This is how, you know, this stuff affects your life and then uh, applied economics um, so called applied economics thinking past stage one. I think it's, it's more, it's a masterclass on how to think as opposed to what to think. It really teaches you how to use your brain to analyze something and it's thinking past step one. That's, that's you know, part of the title. You look at this on face value, like, oh yeah, that's what that is. And so this is your conclusion. And as a, as an exercise that he had in Harvard, one of the professors says, okay, so that's your conclusion. Okay. And what would happen next? If that were to happen, then what would happen next? This would be the, okay, well, this would be the result. Okay. And then what would happen next? Well, this would be the result. And then what? And then what? And then what? And, and you go far enough down that, that uh, thought process, all of a sudden you realize like, Ooh, actually this is, this isn't what I thought it was. This is actually going to have really bad ramifications, but it's like thinking like a chess player. You know, you have to think 20 moves ahead. Because that's how this works. That's how life works. You make a decision that's going to have far-reaching implications for, for the rest of your life, potentially. And so you really do actually need to think about what's going to happen and think about what's that going to be. Like, we have so many examples of politicians just saying, like, oh, yeah, we need to do this policy because we need to help inflation or we need to help this or help that or whatever. Okay, so this little thing that you're doing now, it looks like it might help. Okay, but then what happens? And then what happens? And then what happens? You find out, oh, actually, that makes inflation worse. That puts people out of jobs. That makes, you know, it makes it so, you know, people are losing their homes. That's actually a bad thing, you know? So you have to, you have to think past stage one. And I think that, that just the, the, the examples he uses and the way that he teaches you how to look at information and how to think about it, I think is, is you know, has been so helpful to me in my own work and looking at, at information and looking at other people's arguments and being able to see, you know, the merits and the demerits of them and, and watching this guy debate live. Oh my God. Like this guy just, just eviscerates people. He's a really nice guy, but he is so smart and he is so well-versed that people make this big, long argument that people have been talking about for decades. And he will just say one word, one sentence, and it would just, just cut the whole thing short. And you just be like, oh, no, you know, it, it's actually, you know, it's actually funny at how easily he demand, dismantles these, these arguments. I mean, there's, there's a um, firing line with um, William, a., uh, William F. Buckley back in the, like 1981 with Thomas Sowell on it after he'd written a book talking about all these different sorts of issues that we are still talking about today that he's written, wrote a book about and disproved. 40 years ago. And he had, you know, this uh, law professor uh, on the, on the show to challenge him because that's how, how firing line worked. If, if, if Buckley uh, disagreed with you, he would challenge you and he would, you know, so he had Noam Chomsky on there and just absolutely just, you know, tore his ass to shreds. But 
he would have, if he disagreed with you or maybe had a different viewpoint, he would, he would be very fair, but he would talk about it. It's like, well, in your book, you said this and your book, you said, and he would, he would challenge them if he was more in line with their way of thought, like he would be with Thomas Sowell or Milton Friedman, he would have someone else on or Friedrich Hayek. He was also on there. He would have them on, uh, he would have on a, uh, someone who would antagonize them who had, who had the opposite view. And, you know, it wasn't just some, some, you know, some chump off the street. This would be like a law professor who is a vocal in the, in, you know, in the opposite argument. And so we had this law professor uh, going after him and, and other times, you know, professors of, of economics from Columbia and, and so forth that, you know, would, would challenge him. And, and so would just mop the floor with these people. And it was just, it was absolutely hilarious to watch. And so, you know, I've taken a lot of, uh, you know, debate techniques and styles from him as well. And just being able to look at things and, and, and try to look at things in a similar way and see how he just looks at the, like the keystone of their argument and just pluck it a while and the whole, the whole, uh, um, you know, building falls down. And so I've been able to learn a bit from that. And, and so it's very, very interesting, but I just, I just love listening to the guy speak. I just love seeing interviews with him. I love seeing debates with him and, uh, and just reading his books. I mean, I just don't, I, I just really don't know of anyone else who's, who's more interesting to watch and to listen to than that guy.